Over the past few weeks, there has been a video going viral showing the number of influencers who have been unfortunately dying. Now all of these influencers, ladies and gents, they had something in common. Something very noticeable in common indeed. And if they didn't have something very noticeable indeed in common about them, you would think there may be a serial killer on the loose, ladies and gentlemen. But no, that's incorrect. Although perhaps it is the cereal that they have been over consuming that is the killer here, ladies and gents, because all of these people were huge. Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. You ready to get supersized? She died too. Today I've got the big fruit loop. He's dead. Join me on my fat positive radio show, which didn't last long because she died. That is a viral video from Blair White, who's a YouTuber, and that garnered millions of views. It went super viral. And it exposed the very real threat that people in the body positivity and the fat positivity community face every single day. That they might die, all right? When we're not all being polite and lovely and going, oh, your body's beautiful, everyone's beautiful. When you be real for a moment, you might die because you're too fucking lazy. Anyway, that's just my point of view. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a doctor. There's doctors that say being fat's healthy, so fuck me, right? Before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, this video is brought to you by the great people at Fume. Now, cold turkey is great on sandwiches, but to give up some dirty old habits, some bad old habits, it's not the best way to do it. There is a better way to break those bad habits, ladies and gents, and I'm not talking hypnosis. Not everything about your habit is bad or wrong. Why don't you just take the bad out of the habit? Right? Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial, ladies and gentlemen. It's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful with de-stressing and taking your focus off the bad habit. And ladies and gentlemen, BASE was just launched in January. It's a weighted stand for your fume when it's not in use with a magnet inside that keeps your fume attached. And I tell you what, ladies and gents, I've tried Mint Crisp and it is absolutely mentally delicious. It's fantastic. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and I reckon you should be the next one, ladies and gentlemen. There's thousands of success stories, so why can't it be you? Ladies and gentlemen, head to try fume.com forward slash Butterfield right now or scan the QR code and use code Butterfield to get 10% off when you purchase the journey pack today. That's tryfumefum.com and use code Butterfield to get 10% off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for Fume for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the video. Of the four people who died, I will say this guy, Waffler69, I think he was on, uh, on TikTok. He just ate like strange foods. He wasn't like a body positivity guy but he did die because he overate, so there's that. Well, probably because he overate. There could be other issues going on, but I will say he was very large. It, wa it wasn't looking good. But for the others, <laughs> they're fucked. These four social media influencers were swept up by the movement that claims obesity is perfectly healthy. The tragic truth, they've all died under the age of 45. Now, I'm sure you've never heard of any of these people, so let's have a look at who they are. There's Brittany Sawyer, okay. Cool. Uh, there's Waffler, we've talked about him. He did some good videos. And then there's Cat Paws. Cat Paws, let's have a let's have a moment for Cat Paws because she was one of the most interesting. A well-known activist, which is another word for absolute fuckwit, allegedly. Professor of fat studies, Dr. Cat Paws, who questioned the links between weight and health. Dickhead. Lost a life at age 42. Dickhead. Based at Massey University in New Zealand, she also presented a fat positive radio show. Fuck off, cat. Well, I guess you did, but fuck off. Before she died, she did have this to say when asked about the connection of being overweight and health. Science isn't actually as clear cut as we like to believe, and there's not really quite a consensus yet about the real relationship between weight and health. Well, it would appear that that turned out quite poorly for good old cat. And finally on this list of four humongous creatures is Jamie Lopez who was a part of a reality TV show called Super Size Salon. Jesus Christ. You ready to get super sized? Baby.Beauty Couture is the first ever salon by plus size girls for plus size girls. And here's the problem with Jamie's situation is her show was only her show 
because she was super sized. So if she lost weight, she wouldn't have the show anymore, she wouldn't make money, and she'd be financially ruined. She had to be big, she had to get bigger, and the bigger she got, the more ratings she had. And regrettably, she died doing what she loved, but in fact. She was held up on a pedestal for some people, like a hero, and that's what we're seeing here. People are being told that what they're doing is heroic by saying, no, I'm fat and I'm healthy and I'm beautiful. That is seen as heroics. It is not heroic, it is lazy, and if you end up like that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Sorry, mate, but it's the truth. Now, there are dozens of stories of fat influencers dying. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's going to be a lot more before the end of this decade. After all, spreading the message, the harmful message, that being fat is beautiful, being proud to be fat, and don't change a thing. You're perfect the way you are. Spreading that message. It's akin to suggesting to people that, oh, you know, if you smoke cigarettes, you should be proud of yourself. It's beautiful that you smoke durries. It's beautiful that you smoke cigarettes. You love tobacco. How good's that? It's not going to hurt you. It's healthy for you. Fuck off, mate. It's dangerous. And then there's this fucking idiot. <laughs> Whiteness killed the body positivity movement. Honestly, do not listen to people who write articles. They are regular people. They're fucking idiots. You wouldn't fucking save them if they were on fire. Do not listen to them just because they write in a publication. Fuck them. No one looks at an alcoholic and sees them as brave and powerful and as healthy, so why would you do it to someone who overeats? People make careers out of spreading this harmful message. I'm looking at you, Tess Holiday. Well, I guess everyone's looking at you in some respect, because you are everywhere. All at once, all together, yeah. People like her who spread the message that being fat is healthy is an awful influence to have on the world. Awful. Not to mention fucking dangerous, mate. Very dangerous. Excuse the sound of sizzling sausage in the background, but I have to tell you something that is truly going to change your brain. We are well into January and that means we are seeing people that are losing weight, doing weight loss things, moving their bodies, eating differently, and I want to tell you that none of that has anything to do with you. Wow, you're all so brave. Regal bravery is not doing a thing. Just sitting at home and fucking sizzling up some sausages. And maybe you doubt Tess Holliday's impact on people, but she is everywhere. Here she is speaking at the UN for some fucking reason. Maybe she's uh, talking to starving African children about why they don't have any food. Uh, maybe. I'm sure many in the room know that with weight discrimination, we see this showing up in, in schools, with downgrading by teachers, uh, with admission to college. We see it in the workplace, not people not getting people in larger bodies, not being hired, not getting promoted, getting lower salaries. Yes, right, that's who should be speaking to the world. A fat lady who refuses to make changes to make herself healthier, do the hard yards, make herself a better person. Yeah, let's listen to her and hear what she has to say. Maybe she'll change the world. No one cares, Tess. You should not be speaking at the UN. Not because you're fat. Just because of the shit that you put out there, how can we trust anything else that you say? If, if, if what you say and what you build your entire career on is such shit, such absolute garbage and rubbish, then how can we listen to anything you say and take anything with a grain of salt? Now, strap yourself in because I'm about to say something pretty outrageous. The Daily Mail actually did a good job at reporting this and being critical of this movement. I can't believe I'm saying it, but yes, well done to the Daily Mail. I know, shock horror, well done. The past decade has seen extraordinary momentum building around a central argument that being obese doesn't have to mean unhealthy. In other words, you can be fat and fit. And it really is gaining momentum. Spend five minutes on Fat Talk, the hypertensive corner of the internet that is just full of people being huge and complaining about people who aren't as huge you will understand that these people don't want to change. They just want to get bigger and bigger and demand that you respect them for it. Why would I care about you? You're not doing anything. And this is where phrases like health at every size and shit like that, this is where they are born and this is where they gain that momentum. TikTok has a lot to answer for. The US edition of Cosmopolitan magazine was criticized for running covers featuring plus size women in yoga poses under the headline, this is healthy. I'm sure we can all remember that as a part of a drive to challenge beauty stereotypes. It is also featured US plus size model Tess Holiday, who at five foot three, which is like this high on me, 300 pounds. She's 300 fucking pounds, has a BMI of 53. Oh my God, more than double the healthy range and probably double her age as well, which was a decision condemned as dangerous and misguided. You also saw it happen with uh, Sports Illustrated. 
they put a rather, she wasn't that big, but they put a large, larger lady on the front cover, then they put a trans lady on the front cover, and then everyone like two weeks ago lost their jobs at Sports, Sports Illustrated. So yeah, go fat, positive, or go broke, or lose your job at the very least. Self-styled fat activists, which is an oxymoron, uh, meanwhile, not only promote larger bodies as healthy, but reject decades of science which prove the dangers of excess body fat. We all know this. Uh, encouraging devotees to ignore doctors who recommend they lose weight. And even some doctors are saying that being fat is healthy. It's all madness. It's all based on the fact that people are terrified to offend other people. And it is only going to end in the deaths of these people who demand we respect them and demand that we change what we know about science. Demand that we ignore science and we look at something else and go, no, no, let's worry about everyone's feelings. Well, no one gives a fuck, all right? No one cares. And I know I make a lot of videos about the fat positivity community and the fat acceptance shit. But this is happening every single week. There's new stories about it. And that's why I cover them all the time because there's so much shit out there. There's so many bad messages being spread that someone has to say something and that's someone, God, I'm a beautiful person and a wonderful human being. It's gonna be me. And if you're not convinced, uh, this is from Professor Navid Sattar from the University of Glasgow. The science around health and obesity is irrefutable. Ample evidence shows obesity can promote or accelerate over 200 diseases, such as diabetes, stroke, many cancers, diseases uh, that impact movements such as arthritis and mental health. All things that can kill you other than arthritis. I guess maybe arthritis can kill you. Maybe you fall off a cliff because you can't hold on. Who the fuck knows? And yet, we still have these arguments about health. Even though all that evidence is there, we still have this argument. And these trends continue. The yas queens, the you go girl, the girls fuck off. It is always girls too. It's always, it's always women. The fat positive community doesn't welcome men because we're realistic. We're like, fuck off. We're never fat. Don't try and make it better. I just love cheeseburgers. If you are overweight, do something about it or you won't live as long as you would if you did something about it. Simple as that. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, maybe I'm wrong. I wanna know what you think actually killed these people. Wrong answers only in the comment section, please. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Uh, me dick stings, to the au revoir, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this fantastic video by me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some very important news. I am going on a world tour in 2024. If you are in the USA, the UK, Australia, or New Zealand, or any other part of the world, make sure you sign up for tickets at isaacbutterfield.com. And as soon as they become available, you will get an email. You'll be able to get them straight away, and you won't miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Once again, see you next time. Bye.